Hi, and welcome to our video on similarity in right triangles. And really what we're going to be talking about today is something called geometric mean. Now this is something that's going to be um, fairly new to you, even though it's based on proportions. It just looks kind of funny. All right, so basically the geometric mean of two positive numbers is the positive square root of their product. Um, so basically that means if I'm trying to find the geometric mean, let's say I've got a equals 2 and b equals 3. That's basically the same thing as saying 2 to x is equal to x to 3. And if I do my cross products, I get x squared equals 6. And when you have a squared, in order to undo something that's being squared, you take the square root of it. So the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 6 is we're just going to leave it as the square root of 6. So basically that's where it comes from. The geometric mean is the square root of two positive numbers. So the geometric mean is the square root of 2 times 3 which is 6. So these two things are the same thing. Alright, so let's try the second one. It wants to know the geometric mean of 6 and 10. So remember the geometric mean is the square root of the product of those two numbers. So 6 times 10. So x is the square root of, oops, excuse me, the square root of 60. Okay, um, and that can be simplified. So this can be simplified as the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. Right? And if you watch the Simplifying Radicals video, that means that that is x is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 15, which is equal to 2 times the square root of 15. Alright, last one. So we have a equals 4 and b equals 9. So the geometric mean of 4 and 9 is x is equal to the square root of 4 times 9. Now here we could simplify that so we have the square root of 36 which is equal to 6. So the geometric of 4 and 9 is 6. Okay, so that's just a basic skill. So now we're going to talk about how that relates to right triangles. So let's say we've got this right triangle here and it's kind of sitting funny on its hypotenuse. Okay, so we have triangle A B and C. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to draw an altitude from the right angle B and I'm going to go down and hit AC at a perpendicular. Okay, and I'm going to label that point as D. Okay, basically what I've created is I've created three right triangles. Okay, I have got this right triangle right here. Right, so I have triangle a, B, C. I also have this little right triangle right here. So that's triangle A, B, D. And then I also have this other right triangle right here, which is triangle B, D, C. Okay, so basically what I've done is I've taken one right triangle and I have split it up into three separate right triangles. And if you notice, they all share side lengths. So the triangles that you end up with, if you split them all apart, and I'm just going to go ahead and label them out. Okay, so there's the big triangle. There's triangle one. Here is triangle two. And then here is triangle three. Okay, remember these are all right triangles. And this is three. All right, so this triangle is the big one, A, B, C, right? Um, this other one, if you just follow the, um, the vertices, this is B, C, D, and this is A, D, B. All right, so it's asking you in your notes, are these three triangles similar? Well, they are because they all have a right angle Okay, they all share certain sides. So if you go through and you were to figure out um, the proportionality of the sides since they share sides with the right angles, that these this creates three 
similar right triangles. Okay, so if you're going to write your similarity statement, you would say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle BCD is similar to triangle ADB. It's hard to see it when they're all looking like this, okay? But if you were to pull them apart and set them into three equal tri or sorry, three separate triangles, you see that they are similar. Okay. So um, number five says complete this conjecture. The altitude to a hypotenuse of a right triangle. So let's see, I'm going to draw this triangle again. So here's my right triangle. Okay, the altitude of a right triangle to the hypotenuse, which is this one right here, forms two triangles that are proportional to each other. So it's proportional to each other. and proportional to the original triangle. So it basically means that you create three similar triangles. Okay, so let's go back to this right here. Okay, so on number six, it's telling you to complete the similarity statement. And actually, I'm going to do something. Hold on a second. Okay. So we have our three triangles. It's saying to complete the following proportion using triangles two and three. So I have AD is to BD as something is to DC. All right, so let's look. We've got AD on a triangle two. Actually, it would be triangle three. So we've got AD right here is to BD. Okay, as hold on a second. All right, so we have got AD, which is this one right here. AD is to BD as DC, which is going to be this one, is to this one, your BD. Okay, so if you notice, when I have my proportion, excuse me, when I have my proportion, if I do my, um, my cross products, I get BD squared is equal to AD times DC. This looks a little bit different, but basically it's the same thing as geometric mean. So it says the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of the right triangle is the geometric mean Okay, of the lengths of the two segments of the hypotenuse. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is that when you're, when you're doing these, the geometric mean can kind of be kind of confusing when you're looking at it like this. So we're just going to talk about how to solve problems, and I'll, we'll go through that, and then I'll come back. All right, so let's look at uh, number seven. All right, so we have our triangle here. Right, and when we're talking about geometric mean, we're always going to be talking about right triangles, that are split into other right triangles. All right, so we've got y, x, z, and 5, and 7. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the altitude theorem. So basically, the altitude theorem says this, is that the altitude of a right triangle that's drawn to its hypotenuse is equal to the geometric mean of the two lengths that it creates. So to find x, you're going to say x Okay, so basically that we, what that means, if you want to find x, you're going to say x is equal to the square root of 5 times 7, which equals to the square root of 35. So x is equal to the square root of 35. All right, so I'm going to write this down for x over here. Okay, the square root, oops the square root of 35. Okay, so that is the hypot or the altitude theorem. Now the other one we're going to talk about is the leg theorem. Okay, so if you're trying to find the length of a leg of the original right triangle, that is equal to the, the product of the short leg, the one that's adjacent to it. Okay, so the product of this one 
and the product of the entire leg. So this one would be y is equal to the square root of 5, so 5 times, and then this whole amount here is 12, so 5 times 12, which is equal to the square root of 60. All right, so the square root of 60 can be simplified in to the square root of, right, the square root of 4 times the square root of, actually, no, let's do this, the square root of 16 Okay, so that is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 15, which is equal to 2 times the square root of 15. So y is equal to 2 times the square root of 15. All right, so now we're going to do the other side, which is z. All right, so on z, it's the same thing. So z is equal to z is equal to the geometric mean of the adjacent leg, which is 7, times the entire leg, which is 12. Okay, so that would be z is equal to the square root of 84. So this one's equal to the square root of 84. Okay, like I said, it, it's not hard, it's just going to take some practice. Okay, let's try number 8. I'm going to draw this a little bit differently just so it's facing the way that we want. Alright, so here's our triangle. Our hypotenuse, or sorry, our altitude is y. And the short leg over here is 10 and x. Then we have 20 over here and we have z. All right, so this one's a little bit different. So let's do, um, okay, so let's go ahead and solve for x first. Okay, so remember, when we're talking about the legs, so here's our leg. Okay, so 20, we're working backwards on this one, is equal to the geometric mean of 10, because that's your adjacent leg, times the entire distance here, which is 10 plus x. Okay, so that equals 20 is equal to the square root of, <clears throat> and actually before we even do that, let's talk about something. If we want to get rid of this square root sign, okay, the opposite of taking the square root of something is squaring it. So if I square this side and I square this side, I end up with 400 is equal to 10 times <clears throat> 10 plus x. All right, so I'm just going to solve for x. I'm going to divide each side by 10. And I get, <clears throat> excuse me, 40 is equal to 10 plus x. So x has to be equal to 30. Okay, so this distance is 30 and that's 10. All right, so let's go back now and let's solve for one of the other sides now that we've got that one. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for y. Okay, so y is equal to the geometric mean of, remember this is the altitude, so it's, this, it's the product of the two numbers, so 10 times 30. So that means that y is equal to the square root of 300, okay? And then we can simplify that, right? The square root of 300 is equal to the square root of 100 times the square root of 3, which is equal to 10 times the square root of 3. So y is equal to 10 times the square root of 3. Okay, now let's do z. All right, so z is a leg. Remember, the leg theorem says that the leg is equivalent to the geometric mean of the adjacent leg. The adjacent leg is 30 
times the sum or the entire hypotenuse of the whole triangle. So that would be, <clears throat> excuse me, 40. All right, so that means that z is equal to the square root of 1200. All right, so the square root of 1200, we can simplify that. That's the square root of 100 times the square root of 12, which equals 10 times the square root of 12. And that can actually be simplified to 10 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So that is equal to 20 times the square root of 3. All right, one more, number 9. Okay, so here is our triangle. All right, so we've got y, z, the square root of 6, 3, and x. All right, so we always want to do the one that has, let me make this smaller, we always want to do the one that only has one variable. So for that, we're going to go ahead and solve for this x. All right, so we're going to use the altitude. So the square root of 6 is equal to the square root of 3 times x. Okay, so all we're going to do is to get rid of those radical signs, the square root signs, we're going to square both sides. So we're going to square this side, and we're going to square that side. So that gives us 6 is equal to 3x. So that means x has to be equal to 2. All right, let me go ahead and write that in real quick. All right, so x is equal to 2. All right, so now we're going to go through and we're going to solve for y. So y is equal to the geometric mean of the adjacent leg, which is 3, times the entire hypotenuse here, which is 5. So y is equal to the square root of 15. Square root of 15. Okay, and then z is equal to the square root of the adjacent leg, which is 2, times the entire distance right here, which is 5. So that means z is equal to the square root of 10. Okay, so just a quick review. Okay, I know this is a little bit confusing, but it's just because it's something new. So if you have any right triangle, so here's my right triangle, okay, and I'm going to draw an altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse, and I create three congruent, or sorry, not congruent, I create three similar right triangles. So if you're solving for the altitude, okay, the altitude is equal to the geometric mean of the two sides that that altitude creates. So let's just say this is 3 and that's 4. So x is equal to the square root of 3 times 4, which equals 2 times the square root of 3. Okay, that is the altitude theorem. All right, so now let's do the leg theorem. Okay, the leg theorem is when you're solving for one of the legs. So let's do this as 3 and let's do that as 6. Okay, the leg theorem says that the leg is equal to, so the leg is equal to the geometric mean of the adjacent leg, which is this, 3 times the entire distance here. So 3 plus 6, which is 9. So that is equal to 3 times the square root of 3. Okay, and it works if it's on this other side, except for now the adjacent leg is this one right here, and then the entire sum is this entire one right here. Okay, so um, go ahead and just practice. Like I said, it's a little bit difficult, but it's just because it's something new. Um, there's another video also that's just called Geometric Mean. It's kind of just a succinct um, explanation. Okay, um, well you guys have fun and I will see you later. Thanks, bye.